Welcome everyone, this is Legion Incorporated here today with Zeus Prodigy. We are already in Mountain Blade Bannerlord, or Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlords, and um, we're going to be starting a new campaign. He's here to help with um, conversations over what we're doing here um, and a, a bit of commentary back and forth while we're uh, giving a overlook of this game. Um, at this stage, you get to choose your culture for your character. So you have the Vlandians, which are 20% more upgrade experience to troops from battles. Sturgeons, which are 20% less speed penalty from snow. 20% construction speed bonus to town projects, wall repairs, and siege engines for the Empire. The, the Asari, our caravans are 30% cheaper to build with 10% less trade penalty. The Cusades give you 10% extra speed bonus for horsemen on the campaign map. And the Batanians give you, um, uh, forests give 10% less speed penalties to parties. My personal preference is the Volandians, which they are descendants... He doesn't want to be a tree hogger. No, definitely not. But the Vlandians are descendants of adventurers from the West who lived under the Empire for centuries before forming an independent kingdom of their own. Um, and so that's what we're going to go with today. I mean, I see nothing wrong with being a tree hugger. <laughs> we're, I mean, that's uh, why they move so much faster. They, you, they just hug trees. Right, they just jump from one to the other. Um, so we're exactly. either going to... You have male or female. I'm going to go with male. Uh... You have a few different voices to choose from, and I like this one here. I'm going to go with a deeper pitch, uh, make sure he's nice and blinding as far as the skin tone, um, put him up to about 75% height, and then we move on to the next spot. We have your face. Um, I don't do a ton here, and now that I think about it, we're going to go back just one. I'm going to randomize everything real quick just to give... A basic, um, a basic design to start with. It's not going to be a hundred percent that default, so we don't have a ton to work with. Lower those, okay. lower those stats back to where they were, um, and then go into the more heavier designs. Unfortunately, he won't go with my idea, which is make an army of hobbits. Well, I have to add that I am actually looking forward to. Um, a couple mods that are upcoming for Banner Lord. They're supposed to be bringing in a Lord of the Rings as well as a Game of Thrones mod for this game. And if those do show up, I think it's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, but for now, um, going through basically all this stuff, you can do multiple different kinds of teeth types. I don't want any buck teeth or anything weird, so I'm just going to go with like you know, you don't want perfect straight teeth or anything either, so maybe I think that one's probably fine. Um, come back over to the hair. I'm going to go with something like this here. Nope, not that one. That is. Out of sheer stupidity, is the one where you have a missing me? Where you have a what? A missing ear. No, no missing ears on this one. But in the next section, you also have your facial markings. You can see them over here. Um, that includes things like a uh, scar with a blind eye or horizontal scar, multiple scars, uh, blind eye again, opposite blind eye with multiple scars. Um, for the sake of him being a warrior, I don't know how good of an idea it is to have him missing an eye, so I like the scar, but don't necessarily like the eye being missing, or not missing, but injured. So for well, me, not on my idea. For me, this is my preference, uh, with that said, but, um, I actually like how this one looks. The three scars over the eye with it blind. Well, then just go with it. Okay, well, I mean, some warriors got hurt and whatnot, so yeah. they'd stop them if they lost an eye. Yeah. Just might mean they lop off the veteran's arm here or there, but I mean, <laughs> eh, what's an arm? 
No, nobody cares about arms. So I, I think that's a good exactly. statement. So you go into the next area, and then you choose your family. And these choices will affect, if you look here where the mouse is showing, it affects the stats over here on your left side of the screen. Your vigor, your control, endurance, cunning, social, and intelligence. But more directly, it's going to be controlling your uh, individual skills. Uh, with vigor, you have one-handed, two-handed, polearm, bow, crossbow throwing, riding, athletics, smithing, scouting, tactics, roguery, charm, leadership, trade, steward, medicine, and finally engineering. Me personally, I find it most beneficial to get your social aspects up because you can learn your combat stuff as you're waging war or doing all those parts. So, back to your choices, you were born into a family of either a baron's retainers, urban merchants, yeomen, urban blacksmith, hunters, or mercenaries. The retainers add a point to polearm and riding. Merchants add to charm and trade. Yeoman adds to polearm and crossbow. Blacksmith adds to two-handed swords and smithing. Hunters add to crossbow and scouting, whereas mercenaries add to roguery and crossbow. My personal preference out of these choices is going to be that urban mer merchants. And so it shows you down here, it gives you 10 skill level and one focus point to trade and charm. One attribute point to intelligence. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, any comments there on that one? I would say go with the hunters and whatnot. Well, the reason why I don't personally go with hunters is because I don't do too much in the way of scouting, and I definitely don't use crossbows. I I'm, uh, I generally use a one-handed sword and shield combination on horseback. So I mean, you can use the sword, but have your foot soldiers with bows and whatnot that way. Oh, yeah, no, no. Uh, see, this is actually only uh, affecting your own characters. That brings up a very good point. This doesn't have anything to do with anybody in your armies that are attached to you, nothing. This is all about your character personally, um, which is why I go back to the urban merchants. Having that charm and having that uh, trade ability is really beneficial to relations with other people around you. And I did not know, but relations with other people is a very big and important factor I involved in all of this right now. Um, so one of the things that I'm gonna do um, at this stage, it, well, not one of the things, but what I'm going to choose here is the urban merchants for that. Excuse me. Next, we have your early childhood. Um, your choices are leadership skills, um, which are going to be giving a point to leadership and tactics. Your brawn, which is going to give two-handed and throwing a point. Attention to detail, um, focus on athletics and one-handed and your aptitude for numbers, engineering, and trade, your way with people, charm, and leadership, and skill with horses. So my personal uh, uh, preference in this is to go with either your leadership skills um, or your way with people. Leadership skills are uh, if the wolf pup gang of your early childhood had an uh, um, alpha, it was definitely you. All the other kids followed your lead as you decided what to play, where to play, and led them in games and mischief. The other option is your way with people. You were always attentive to other people, good at guessing their motivations. You studied how the individuals were swayed and tried out what you learned from adults on your friends. So what do you think between leadership skills and way with people? The difference... I'm trying to go with leadership. Okay, because that gives you a little bit into tactics as well, um, adding a point into cunning. So I think that's not a bad choice. Um, in your adolescence, growing up, you spent most of your time at the town's watch training ground with the alley gangs at the docks and building sites in the markets and caravan uh, caravans, basically. Uh, with your tutor and caring for horses. Those are the, the choices we have. Town's Watch gives you archery or er, crossbow and tactics. 
gangs gives you roguery in one hand. Docks and building is athletics and smithing. Markets and caravans gives you charm and trade. Tutor gives you engineering and leadership and caring for horses, which is going to be your stewardship and your riding. Um, me personally, I say tutor on this one because uh, it gives you that engineering and leadership combination. Uh, I'd go down watch. It might make most sense later on down the road. I mean, considering you use one hand, and it's really... It's your judgment of how troops will perform in contact. This allows you to make a good prediction of when an unorthodox tactic will work and when it won't. But again, it gives a point to archery, which is where, me personally, I, I don't have the preference. Um, yeah, it, it's got, for me, I have to say I'm going to be going with the tutor one. Um, basically, the private tutor, you took full advantage reading voraciously on history, mathematics, philosophy, and discussing what you read with your tutor and classmates. <coughs> so better, better ed educated and the ability to do the engineering, which engineering is knowledge of how to make things that can withstand powerful forces without collapsing. It's used for building both structures and the devices that knock them down. Um, over, over here, you get to choose your youth. As a youngster growing up in Colradia, war was never too far away. You stood garrison with the guards, which is going to be engineering again and crossbow. Mm -hmm. Rode with the scouts, which is going to be riding and archery. Training with the infantry, which is one-handed and pole arms. Or joined the skirmishers, which is archery and throwing. Me personally, I always like the idea of the, the infantry. Um, Levy armed with spear and shield, drawing from small holding farmers, have always been the backbone of most of most armies of Colradia. This one will give you the pole arm and one-handed, as well as a, a tribute point to vigor. And what about what do you think, uh, Zeus? Honestly, I'm gonna leave this one up to you. Okay. We'll go with the infantry, like I said. I'm only the tactician, which would stay back and order my men to do whatever they want, but you're more in your face. Right. In games like this, definitely, I agree. Um, it says, before you set out for a life of adventure, your biggest achievement was defeating an enemy in battle, which is one-handed and two-handed, leading a caravan, which is tactics and leadership, invested money in a workshop, trade and smithing, survived a siege, bow and crossbow, famous escapade, roguery and athletics, or treated people well, which is going to give you your stewardship and charm. Um, so on this one, I sort of go against my usual, um, my usual choice. I either feel that leading a caravan or defeating an enemy in battle are the ones that are going to be most beneficial here, uh, giving you a little bit of a edge up leadership wise, um, ability to inspire and making um, uh, enthusiasm and courage in larger groups, or the again judgment of troops and how they um, perform. I think the caravan is probably the best choice. It says your family needed someone trustworthy to take a caravan to a neighboring town. You organized supplies, ensured a constant watch to keep away bandits, and brought it safely to its destination. Um, you get 10 skill level in one focus point to tactics and leadership, and one attribute point to cunning, plus one to calculating, and 10 to renown. So it gives you a nice little boost to how well you're known, because you succeeded in this caravan. And your, your pointers on this one? What do you think, the caravan or the... Sorry, my brain just like showed up with it. Um, cause I'm trying to keep it in line with what you're going with. So the caravan. The tactical one only affects you, not your troops. Well, no, no. Tactical actually affects your ability of how you command your troops. As well... Yeah, no, no, no. Tactical that way, they're a little easier than I want to do. Yes, and so I, I think that's not a bad choice. So, 
I will go with that one. That goes along more along the story of what I do. Um, I mean, the worst case scenario, you saw just this wand off flat when you come, they go straight, which would be relatively fun. Yeah. <clears throat> so right here, you get to choose your story background. Like many families in Colorado, your life was upended by war. Your home was ravaged by the passage of army after army. Eventually, you sold your property and set off with your father, mother, brother, and your two younger siblings to a new town you'd heard was safer, but you did not make it. Along the way, the inn at which you were staying was attacked by raiders. Your parents were slain, your two youngest siblings seized, but you and your brother survived because your choices are... You subdued a ranger, uh, a raider, sorry, um, one-handed and athletics. You drove them off with arrows, bows, and tactics. You rode off on a fast horse, riding and scouting. You tricked the raiders, tactics, and roguery. Organized the travelers to break out, which is going to again be leadership and charm. So on this one, I don't really necessarily have a preference. Um, most of them play into what I already am going to be working on in the game. Um, I guess if I had to choose, um, I would probably say either subdued one of the raiders or organize the travelers to break out. Again, subduing a raider puts another point into one-handed, which is what I specialize in for this game. Also, it increase... also sounds more badass that way. Yeah. Well, basically, the difference is in this one, you are able to grab a knife in the confusion of the attack. You stab the raider, blocking your way. And then the other choice is you encourage the few travelers in the end to break out in a coordinated fashion. Raiders killed or captured most of you, but you and your brother were able to escape. In other words, uh, all you idiots run forward and be a human meat chicken while we run that way. Yeah, so I actually agree with Rick on this one. Um, uh, death by butter knife. Yep, death by butter knife is the best choice here. So, standing ground and, and stabbing somebody. Alright, and so the name, we're going to go with this one. Let's see... You know, one of my favorite uh, characters to create is uh, based off of another project that I'm working on. And so I think I'm going to go with that one here. We're going to go with uh, Tritus. Um, and this basically just gives you a list of everything that you've already chosen. Culture, uh, Vlandia, urban merchants, leadership skills, tutor, trained with the infantry, led a caravan, stabbed a raider with a butter knife. Yeah. How'd you die, John? I got stabbed to death with the butter knife. <laughs> and so that's what we're going to be choosing for this one today. Um, I'm going to just leave it at what it comes up with. It, it, it is set to an easier difficulty, but this is a very challenging game. So what I'm going to do is allow uh, auto-allocate clan member perks. So that means anybody joining is just going to be uh, getting increased on their own. I figure just focusing on myself and how I'm handling things and letting the progression of the game really develop the characters on their own. So we're going to start the game here. And uh, as Rick and Morty would say, here we go. <clears throat> so it says, Brother, it's been three days now and we've been tracking those bastards. I think we're getting close. We need to think about what happens when we catch them. How are we going to rescue Varric and Alda? Are we up for a fight? And I'd say yes. This looks like an old training field for the legions. Perhaps we can spare some time and brush off our skills. The practice could come up useful when we catch up with the raiders. So, I've already done this, um, but I think for the sake of this video, at the very least we should run through uh, a couple parts of this tutorial. Um, so you have your standard movements, W, A, S, and D, and uh, you basically get to choose a couple of pathways right now. You have your combat pathway, your archery, uh, your horse pathway, and then your archery pathway. Mind you, I have not done anything with archery yet, so that might be an interesting one for the training sake. But we'll start over here on combat, 
and you walk down this path and you have a couple choices. You can use your sword and shield training or you can use uh, the two-handed sword training. So um, I will show you a bit of both of those real quick. Pick up the sword and shield. We're going to come over here to the trainer. And he wants you to defend from the left, defend from the right, defend up, defend down. Attack from the left, attack from the right, attack from the top, and poke him. All right, so we, success we successfully finished that part. We'll put this back. Oh, nope, picks it up again. We'll just pick this one up then. There we go. And so this is the two-handed sword, which I generally do not uh, prefer. It's just a little bit more complicated at times. Um, you've got attack from the left, attack from the right, attack from above, and attack from below. And all that is, I know I did that quickly, but you just literally look a little bit to one direction and press your button. Look, look to the other direction and press your button. And now he's just letting you beat him up. I mean, <laughs> let's uh, put the well, weapon I mean, back. Why does it always a valid option? Just beat the crap out of it. And then you go into your next area, which is the little bit more advanced. So we're going to go with the sword and shield to start off with again. You get to fight both of these trainers. And basically your object is just to beat them up. Because for some reason, they want you to stab them repeatedly. Oh, he got me there. This guy's not really putting out much of a fight, admittedly. Well, I mean, what else can he do? You're holding a giant piece of wood in front of him. <laughs> and so now this other, this is the veteran trainer, and so now you got to give him a try. Better weapon, better skills. Although I think he's somewhat at a disadvantage, even though he's called the, the veteran trainer. Um, the two-handed sword is obviously going to be harder to block attacks with. Um, it just does more damage. Um, see, I actually would say I beat him a little bit easier just for the sake of um, I had better defense ability. Um, you'll see a little bit of the development here when I try with the two-handed sword. Um, what they're going to put with this action trainer is not going to shoot you in the back with the shield. Actually, that would be really going to be funny. See, on this guy, just because I am not as good with defending with these weapons, um, I just beat him up. Got him on that one. Like I said, it's just for that part, as far as I'm considered, that's mostly luck. But here we have sword and lance. Um, or I mean, shield and lance, excuse me. Uh, and so we'll give this guy one more fight here on the advanced combat training. The ultimate way of pointing out the flaw. Okay, put it down, Red. Right? Put, put the shield down. Alright. So again, I think this one's going to be a lot easier just simply because although the spears only have sort of one way to attack, or well, I guess more accurately two instead of four, um, you have a little bit of um, slow going on there, but it, it's very simple. I mean, when you have that shield to defend, 
you're going to get through the training a lot easier. And so the next area we have is going to be the horseback training. Um, you have, to begin with, you have the archery and the mounted spear. Um, I'm going to start with the mounted spear. As I said, archery is, at least so far, not something I've done a lot in this game. And so you finish this track and you're trying to hit all of those pots, which I just missed the very first one. Well, I mean, you missed it with your weapon, but you walked into it with your face, so I mean... It's got to count for something, right? I know, right? I mean, that's also why they don't have you do an archery, because you accidentally shot the last dude last time. <laughs> you get telling you, shoot him, shoot him, and you're, well, you shot your own guy in the back of the head. So far, we're doing pretty well on this. Definitely better than the very first time I did. But again, I have some experience doing some of this battle now um, in the real game itself um, and in other playthroughs. A little bit of a jump there for everybody. Your horses aren't stuck to the ground. You can actually jump over obstacles. Oh, missed one barrel. How can you miss? Oh, missed another one. All right, match them out. So I got 20 out of 23 of them in that run through. All right. And so to exit off of your horse, you press the Z button uh, to, to get on it. I believe it is F, but I In don't... In reality, he doesn't know. He's going to teabag the horse now. <laughs> uh, the honest answer is I really don't remember how to get back up on the horse, so we will skip that for a second and move on to the mounted sword training. Oh, yeah, it is, it is F. It just didn't want me to until I switched things up. And I am horrible with the first shot again. Yes. I mean, don't worry, it's not like you're recording this or anything. <laughs> And yelling randomly, even though this is not a real battlefield. Does not improve your accuracy. Oh, just a little too far away on that one. Alright, so let's see how bad he did. I did literally the exact same 20 and 3 on that one. So now I will give it one shot on the archery, my first time ever using the bow. So let's see and, how and it works. Point, folks, he can't hit the broad side of a bow on. Apparently not. I mean, I don't know how you're hitting something that's not stationary. How are you hitting something that's not stationary? That, that absolutely made no sense, and I just confused myself. <laughs> the target is stationary, but for some reason it's now non-stationary. The target is now chasing Rod. Oh, miss. Does that surprise you? Sometimes. with the three kids in the middle of the street. You you just happen to miss the stop sign. <sighs> I 
I'm actually not doing as bad as the at the archery as I thought I would. He's cheating. He found an aimbot. Oh, missed that the one. God's sakes, he go. just missed the bond. Anderson, yeah, he didn't know how to aim on that one. Or I didn't know how to aim with him on that one. I will. I That's admit all that. I like. Okay. So I actually did a faster time as far as how fast I got through the course. Um, but uh, my fastest tr my fastest time through was on the sword training, it looks like. And so now we finished off the combat training, the horse, uh, the mounted training. And now I'm going to give a shot over here. And we have a crossbow to start with. So let's see how this does. So we're at the shooting position, and I'm just supposed to hit all of the targets. Don't worry, he's gonna miss. With the crossbow, I seem to be doing pretty well. Well, I mean, that aimbot is serving you pretty well, isn't it? And if anybody here knows anything about stuff like aimbots, you can see that it's very obviously not being used. He's just a very sneaky one. And so now we're on to bow archery. Well, archery with a bow. Um, a little bit uh, faster, for sure. But it has a little bit less accuracy. And the longer you hold it, the more unstable it gets. And I have to admit, it's not that I've never used any archery in this game. Um, I have had to during some of the tournaments which are a part of the game in, um, in other areas. Um, so now we're going to do javelin, which is throwing. And a little bit more of a learning arc here, it seems. Well, she's really learning how the thing drops. Yep. So timing, um, I was definitely fastest on the crossbow, which sort of surprises me. Um, followed by bow training, and then way behind with the javelin. But we've now completed all of the combat of the tutorial. Yay! And so, are you ready to leave here? I am ready. Let's go. Ah, uh, damn! They didn't have the option. I said, "Stay there forever and do nothing." <laughs> okay, so you leave the training field. Before we do anything else, we're low on food. There's a village north of here. We can buy provisions and find some help. You're a better rider than I am, so let's let you lead the way. So it wants me to yeah, come over to here right. to um, to Vea, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, take a walk around. Um, you have a few different options for each city. Uh, taking a walk around just allows you to actually go in in person and, and scout out the city. In other words, find out whose pocket He's... is easiest to pick. <laughs> no, not in, that, in this sense. He says to go talk to the headman, he, and he can probably help us find troops and food. Um, so we're going to go right over to that guy. If you hit the left alt button, you can actually see who is in the area. You can see that it is only your brother and him. So bring up the horse, get off. Mind you, one thing you need to know in this game is if the horse is moving at all, you cannot disembark. 
I mean, well, technically you can, it's just the sticking the landing part, you're not going to succeed. <laughs> well, in real life, that's how it would work, but in this game, it doesn't even let you get off the horse unless it's in full stop. Um, okay. He is. This guy is the headman of the village. He asks what brings us here. We need help. Some raiders have taken our younger brother and sister captive. We think they may have passed this way. They got your people too. Sorry to hear that. Those bastards have done a lot of killing and looting in these parts as well. We think they've gone north. I reckon a few folk around here who will join you in going after them if you pay them for their gear. Once you've made your preparations, come and talk to me again, and I may have a task for you if you're going after the after the raiders. Okay, so when you leave an area, it'll return you to the settlement menu where you can purchase supplies and troops. So we're going to pick up all of the headman's troops. Um, we're down to 700 gold right now. We're going to go buy some food um, because each day there is a certain amount of food needed. Uh, to supply your people. Um, sheep are a little bit more expensive, but we're going to pick those up as well. Um, okay, so it wants us to talk to him, so we just click on him there. You can do it in the village like we did before, or you can do it this way. Um, click on his portrait and then hit talk. It'll bring you back into the town, and you can. Uh, he says, Glad to see you found what you needed. Now about that matter I mentioned earlier, there's this wandering doctor who comes through here from time to time, name of Tactos. Uh, treats people for free, we're fond of him. Last we saw him, we last saw him a few days ago, he was carrying some sort of chest which he was very mysterious about. He was on some sort of quest, he said. Though it wouldn't tell him. Hey, my drug stash! <laughs> exactly, he wouldn't tell anybody anything more. He set off on the road just a few hours before the raiders came through here. He, well, he's really not the worldly type, just the kind of fellow who'd stumble into a trap and let himself be captured. We're worried about him. If you can keep an eye out for him, this Tactos, we'd be very grateful. Maybe if he's alive and well, he'll tell you a little more about his quest. You tell me about how many drugs he had in that little box and how high he was before he got caught. <laughs> All right, so we're going back out to the mission area. Before I go too much further, I am going to, um, if it'll let me, let me check that first, probably be a good idea. Yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be slaughtering these sheep. Uh, so now we have a little bit more food. You have grain, wool, uh, grain and meat. I guess I got wool, so I spent money I didn't need to, but that's on me. And so, quest, we are going to locate and rescue a traveler. Look around the village to find a party that captured the traveler whom the headman told you about. So we got to defeat enemy patrols nearby. Um, before I do that, we have a couple points to put in places. Here in one-handed, we have um, a choice between edge placement or extra HP. I like doing a little bit more damage, so I've increased my damage there. Next, I would have recommended putting a little into HP at first since you're a low level. I understand that, but I'm pretty good with this sword and shield, although I do not have those yet, so that is a, a point that I had to add. Um, so, our next choices are in charm. You have either icebreaker or diplomacy. Icebreaker, when you introduce yourself to a new lord for the first time, you have a 10% chance to gain two relation with them. Or, you get a 15% reduced barter penalty, um, uh, and those are the choices you have. So I like to do the icebreaker. Getting that relation is, is a healthy, helpful um, part for your character. On this one, though, I'm going to let... Um, I'm going to let Zeus help me on the choice. You either have adventure stories or you have show your scars. I think show your scars is the most beneficial. They're both um, helpful. Show your scars is party leader, 20% more renowned from battles. The other one, adventure stories, 
is one renowned for each issue resolved. And that's going to be for stuff like even, as far as I can tell, um, your tournaments or completing missions. I don't really like the missions so much. So my thought is instead, I'm going to more focus on those adventure stories. I mean, show your scars, not adventure uh, stories. I mean, yeah, thank you very much. Show your scars. Now, the thing is, do you, how often do you gain the renown? If you gain renown more often with the adventure stories, I'd say go for that because mm -hmm. more renown, more troops, more everything. Exactly, and, that, and he brings sure up a good point. Renown is directly based on how much you can have as far as troops go. The more renown you have, the larger your party is. The larger your party yeah. is, the better you're going to do in these battles. Um, so and to answer his question, uh, it depends. Uh, well, I would say it does depend. Uh, adventure stories basically is going to be affecting all of the missions you're going to be doing throughout the game. But it's only adding one for every issue re resolved. So I don't think that's going to really help in an overall sense. Whereas Show Your Scars, that 20% more from uh, battles can really be a large amount. Because you can sometimes see 10 or 20 renown or more off of a no, single no, no, battle. Show Your Scars, then. Um, They're a battle. Exactly. Um, next, we have Leadership, which you either have Combat Tips or raise the meek. I've normally gone with combat tips, which is a small experience bonus per day to your entire party. I'm thinking that raise the meek actually might be the better choice because once you get past those beginning levels, um, the, your troops are pretty decent at that point. They can handle a lot more. Um, so if I can get my tier ones, twos, and threes, higher ranking faster then getting them to level four and up i think is the more important part so this one will give you a medium experience bonus per day to tier one two and three troops so that's the one i think we should go with here and there you go um tactics you don't really get choices but it, the, the option that they give you here is cavalry, cavalry attacks cause 10% more morale loss. And so that's a really, that's a, always a good bonus, especially early on. Um, and now, through looking at these things, we get to use our uh, free focus points and our attribute points. To give a little bit of explanation there, um, your attribute points are for your vigor, your control, endurance, um, cunning, social, and intelligence. Uh, when you add a point there, it increases how far on this bar you can go. Um, that green line goes further out. The focus points do as well, but again, focus points obviously have a limit. You can have five in each area. So, I have the one att um, attribute point, and so I'm going to probably put that in my writing, because, or in, in, in endurance, um, that's going to affect my writing, my athletics, and my smithing. So I think that's a good spot to do it right now. Um, brings up the overall um, where it needs to be. Um, some of my following ones will probably be in the social aspects. Uh, for now, we have four more free focus points to place, and I think I will do one in one-handed, one in leadership, and one in tactics. This is going to give me—it's going to give me a good boost across the board with all of those. But I have one more, and I think I'm probably going to put that into writing because, as you can see here, that green bar, I get a little bit of points, and I can't even get that first level, which is some horse health. Um, that's going to be very beneficial, and I think it might uh, that one level might have brought me up to where um, I'm almost able to get the bonuses here. Although, again, these bonuses don't help me so much because it's spare arrows or spare throwing weapons. Um, it's the next level that is where I get the benefit. Um, for now, though, I think that wraps up all of the leveling up and getting him started. So. Um, I know this video has been going on a little bit longer than I had originally intended, so 
what I am going to do right now is we're going to go and try to wrap up this one quest and see what we can do with that. Um, He's going to find out that everyone is dead. He took too long. They all died yesterday. So we are fighting two groups out of the three that we were supposed to defeat. And we have all horsemen here. So you get it. Uh, tell your people how to work. Everyone! Right now I'm just going to have everybody um, do their thing. And we're just going to charge. In other words, pray to God they all go the right way, and not just come out and attack each other. Ooh, the horse is getting beat up a little bit on that exchange. I mean, of course it is. It doesn't have any uh, fancy armor or anything. Switch over to my other weapon real quick. And attempt to make a shish kebab. And now I'm hungry. One shish kebab. Two shish kebab. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm going to tenderize this meat before I stab it. Oh, really? He's going to make this difficult on me, apparently. Well, just me, nobody else. Oh, and somebody else killed him. <laughs> All right, so we won that battle. It looks like we didn't have any losses here. Um, we killed six of them and wounded six of them and you can see right here. I got 1.7 renown with 1.2 morale And those are increases for your units um, You can rescue or uh, Rescuing and taking prisoners after a hard-fought battle you have the choice to take some prisoners or recruit those who have been freed from the enemy both options are done by transferring the troops to your party with the little arrow button on the left. So, that's these ones here. I can take these raiders and imprison them. I think this time I will do so. Um, we got a couple of pieces of gear, and so I will probably be equipping some of this here today. Uh, a little bit heavier, uh, but it, it does a little bit better for you. And actually, it looks like this rugged gambeson is going to be the best of those. Um, and then you have your rigid broadsword. I'm going to switch out that mace for the broadsword. And I actually don't like to use the spears personally. I think that you look really cool. Um, but I, I generally like the sword uh, sword play better, so I'll take that spear off as well and just be a swordsman. Okay, so we've gathered all of the loot um, and the weapons. Well, and that's killing musicians, I see. <laughs> yes, the looters, musicians, he says. Um, and they're just sitting there trying to play some nice music, find a little business, and here he comes along to kill them all. So sending the cavalry out, um, the looters generally are going to be hand-to-hand um, -hand soldiers, uh, so you don't really have too much in the way of anything else to worry about. That said, I am going to be uh, making sure you guys know to be cautious that eventually you could be fighting um, people with arrows, and so just randomly sending them off is not going to be always the best way to go.
Got a couple of them down now. Don't worry, they're not actually dead, they're just taking naps. Face down. Ooh! Knocked me out on that one. So I'm zooming out. Now you can see what's going to happen. Um, you can go to toggle the battle and then turn it on to fast pace, which is what I tend to do in these moments. Um, the only person that got wounded was myself, unfortunately. Um, and so we still won the battle. Nobody else got injured on my end. We killed four and wounded two. Um, so we got one renown and .9 uh, morale on that one. So we're going to take another two prisoners, bringing us up to eight out of the 14 we can have with us. And then we get some loot as well. And so on this one, we got some arm pieces, which I had none before. So I will be using the rough tied bracers. And it doesn't look like anything else is worth it as far as armor goes, but I will loot that so I can take and sell it at another point. So it says that I have rescued several prisoners from the raiders that have been dragging the raiders have been dragging along. They're parched and exhausted. You give them a bit of water and bread, and after a short while, one staggers to his feet and comes to you. This is Tactos. I don't know who you are, but I am in your debt. These brigands would have marched us to our deaths. My name is Tactos. I'm a doctor by trade. I was on, well, a bit of a quest. But now I'm thinking, I'm not really made for this kind of thing. I was with a caravan, and they just came out of the brush. We were surrounded and outnumbered, so we gave up. I figured they'd keep us alive if just for the ransom, but then they started flogging us along at top speed without any water, and I was about ready to drop. I could feel the signs of heat stroke creeping up, and I told them, but they just flogged me more. If your group hadn't come along, maybe I have a way to thank you properly. We're looking for two children captured by the raiders. Can you tell us anything? I'm afraid I hadn't seen any children. But after our caravan was attacked, the chief of the raiders, the one they call Ragd Radagos, took off, uh, took and rode off with our more valuable belongings, including a chest that I had. He seemed to be controlling more than one band raiding around the area. If this lot has your kin, then I think he'd be the one to know. And since I have nothing of value left to repay your help, I'll tell you this. If you do catch up with and defeat that ruffian, you may be able to recover my chest. It contains a valuable ornament, which I was told could be of great value, if you knew where to sell it. Ha! Valuable artifact, he says. <laughs> I was trying to find out more about it, but as I say, I've had all my urge for traveling flogged out of me. Right now, I don't think I'd venture more than 20 paces from a well as long as I live. We'll keep that in mind. It well, doesn't look... Say, coincidentally, you have a well on you, that way he always follows. <laughs> it doesn't look like much, and I suspect this lot would give it away for a few coins, but I got it from a mercenary who I treated once, and swore it was related to Noretzi's folly. I don't know what that means, except that Noretzi's was, of course, the emperor who died in battle some years back. Maybe you can find out its true value. Quest completed, and I had to find and defeat the gang of Radigos. Thanks for saving me again. I hope her paths will cross again. Four and a half seconds later. All right, so like I said, everybody, um, I will be doing more videos. But that pretty much wraps up everything we've gotten started here. Um, we're not through the tutorial all the way at the moment. That'll be in the rest of it will be in our next video. And thank you for all of your time. And we hope to see you again soon. If you did like this video, please like it and subscribe subscribe to the channel Legion Incorporated, or hop over to my friend's channel Zeus Prodigy. Thank you very you much, everybody. Computer just yet.